don't we go right to our next speaker? Absolutely. I'm so excited to have Stephanie Cameraman here. Uh, she, I know she's got an event going on too, so she made sure to stop by. So we're super grateful that she did. Um, she, uh, you've probably heard of her. She's known as the Stock Whisperer, and her experience over the past three decades in the trading industry has earned her that uh, that nickname. She's also the author of the book, Dark Pool Secrets, as seen on Fox Business News, Fox News, MSNBC, CNBC. She's recognized for spotting the last 18 corrections long before they happened, and she has achieved a documented 19% success rate over the past five years. So Stephanie, we're super excited to have you here today. Nice to see you. Uh, we're going to learn about dark pool trading today, and uh, I've been waiting for your presentation. I'm really excited to see it. Awesome. I'm Absolutely. so excited to teach you guys. Hi, Stephanie. Hello there. How are you doing, Raleigh? I'm doing great. I'm doing yeah. terrific. We're delighted to have you here, and one of these days we'll talk about your music career. Oh, um, you know about that. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's a secret. <laughs> After I any <laughs> So, yeah, so great. Are you a musician, too? Yes, rock. I am. I'm a drummer in a rock band. And, uh, of course, not doing anything now because all the venues are closed and oh. everything's shut down. But, yeah, been doing that for a while. So, Kindred Spirits, when I was checking you out, I was going, like, check this out. <laughs> yeah, the market is uh, very musical. Uh, it trades on eighth notes. Um, and there's a lot of rhythm. Um, to it as well. I'm going to be teaching you today a little bit about that. Um, so let me just see if I can share my screen. Um, we are going to go. Hold on a minute. I, the problem is I have so many screens. Oh, here it is. There it is. I, I couldn't find it. All right. There you go. I got it. I think you guys can see it now. Do you see the woman that's doing I can do it? Absolutely. Yeah, we're good to go. We can. Let me tell you something. If I can do it, anybody here today can do it, okay? Uh, I know women in general are scared of finances, scared of the stock market, and it's been so amazing to be on tour for the last uh, seven years with many of these women, actually, that you have today, list of speakers. Uh, and I'll tell you something that I've noticed over the past uh, seven years. When I first started in 2013, there is maybe one or two women in the audience. That's it, like one or two. And they were just there to kind of follow their husbands because they didn't want their husbands going to Vegas by themselves. So they kind of tagged along. But I'm going to show you there's a lot more women that are in my audience these days. It has been so amazing. And they are, they are good. They are really great traders. A lot of different reasons for that. Um, a lot of psychology comes into play. There's a lot of amazing men traders. So for those guys that are out there, you guys are great too. But us women really never thought that we could do this. I mean, you know what my, my mother told me when I was young? She said, Stephanie, marry a rich man. Yep, she did. That was her advice to me. She didn't say, go ahead, start your own business, go trade. Uh, no, no, it just wasn't really like that. And so over the years, obviously, things are changing. And so um, this has just been so great. Uh, Carolyn Barodin, um, Anka Metcalf, these are my personal, very close friends. And I know so many other women on this list. So this is an honor to be a part of it. And I'll be telling you that I, I will not be selling you anything today. I am literally dedicating my time to teach you my system of trading that is phenomenal. So sit back and relax and uh, enjoy. But before we start, wake up. <laughs> the market is uh, the market is totally rigged and manipulated. Yep, attention, it is. And this is the crazy part that people don't really want to believe, but it is. It's totally rigged and manipulated by the dark pool. Today, I'm going to teach you how to profit off of it. We cannot stop it. Uh, it's been going on forever, and a lot of people have said to me, Steph, can you call the SEC, and why don't you tell them what you see? Because we see a lot of bad stuff. But to be honest, I'm not going to be a whistleblower. It's not going to get me anywhere. 
Uh, but I'm going to teach as many people as I can how to profit off of it because it's not going to stop. But please, paper trade, this is a new strategy. It takes time to learn. I'm going to be giving you some tips today, but obviously I can't teach you everything in one hour that you need to know. But let's just start with an introduction to the dark pools. I know many of you probably never heard of this. Right. In fact, when I first started on the scene in 2013, nobody knew about it. I started tweeting about it on social media. You can find me there, Volume Princess, or just Stephanie Kammerman. Um, I started tweeting dark pool activity on individual stocks, and people were like, what's that? And I always thought that everybody knew about it. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, it's like nobody. Now more people know about it. In fact, I'm sure many of you here today have heard about it, but don't quite understand what is it and how can I profit off of it. So I'm going to share my edge with you today. Um, in fact, I, as uh, they've already told you, I've, I've written a book called Dark Pool Secrets, and it's free. So you can go to darkpoolsecrets.com. Please go ahead pick up a copy of it. It's been on uh, MSNBC, Fox Business, CNBC. And I'm going to be honest with you, my traders did not want me to write this book. No, they didn't want me sharing the secrets that we've been making money on. But I wanted to help people. Now, obviously, I didn't share everything, but I've shared a lot. I mean, I've, I show you how to spot a correction before it happens. I'm going to be showing you that today. So go ahead and, you know, if you're in the U.S., you can get it for free. Um, I've called every major correction before it's happened. And, you know, people think that I'm psychic, that I have this, like, crystal ball, right? I am really not. Maybe a little bit intuitive. I'm a woman. Um, but it's really following the dark pool. This is my crystal ball. This is my secret. This is how I have a 90% documented success rate on my daily whisper of the day recommendations that I put out on YouTube. And I've called all these corrections and I've spotted insider trading like a million times. I've spotted trades on fear before a major terrorist attack. And all of this is in my book, by the way, I show you the actual trades before these events have happened. So you're probably asking yourself like, where did I learn about this? Yeah. Like, how do I, I majored in psychology. I went to Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton, and I majored in psychology. And um, they don't teach you about the dark pool in college. Even if you were a business major, you're not going to learn about the dark pool. I really got lucky, actually. I got out of college, and the jobs were not that great, right? Not really that great. And I got lucky. I went to happy hour. Uh, my girlfriend it asked me to go to happy hour. She was a receptionist at the time. She was lazy over the summer, and she didn't want to get a real job yet, so she was doing temp work. So she got a job at Schoenfeld Securities. If you live in New York on Long Island, you know this building. This is in Jericho. And she, uh, she gets this job as a receptionist, and she becomes friends with the guys in the million-dollar room. Okay, yeah, million dollar room. And they invite her to happy hour. And she didn't want to be the only female there. Of course, she didn't feel comfortable. So she calls me on the phone. Hey, Steph, you want to come to happy hour? Well, who are you going with? Well, I'm going with these guys that make millions of dollars. Really? And they're really cool. Don't worry. They're like the nicest guys you ever met. Well, she didn't really have to like twist my arm, right? Sure, I'll go. And I'll, I'll be honest, I did not expect them to come walking in with jeans and sneakers. I was expecting like Armani suits. And so I was like, okay, I could talk to these guys. These guys, and you know what I noticed? They loved their job. They would talk about it. I'm like, so tell me, what do you do? I didn't know anything about the market. Oh, you know, we work at, we work at Schoenfeld Securities. Um, and we do an overnight trading system based on unusual volume. And, you know, they didn't mention the word dark pool. But they talked about unusual volume, and that's what they follow, and they loved it. And Scotty, this one guy, said, you know, I am having a great year. I made a million dollars, but I must have left like $100,000 on the table because I couldn't keep track of what I was buying and selling. I need an assistant. Like, do you know somebody? Looked around, and I said, well, you know, I could, I could do it. I don't know anything about the market. Don't worry. It's so easy, he said. I could teach you. Okay, that's what he said. It's so easy, I can teach you. So Monday morning, you guys, 
I started out here. And guess where they put me? My job was sitting in front of this machine called an instrument, okay? Dark pools of liquidity. This is a computer that had all the volume that the big institutions do, all right? Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Barclays. Now, let me just explain a little bit about the dark pool. It's just, it's an alternative exchange where the big guys are hiding their orders, okay? So it was my job to keep track of this hidden exchange where the big guys were. So if Scotty said, hey, buy Microsoft. And I looked on, I punched it up on the incident machine and I saw that they were selling. I'd say, Scotty, mm, there's a huge offer. Like you don't want to buy Microsoft now. Go, oh, thank you so much. And I would save him hundreds of thousands of dollars, all my whole table. They'd say, oh, sell Cisco. And i say, oh, you don't want to sell. There's a huge buyer. Now, think about the edge you have when you can follow the big guys, right? See what they're doing. Most people, like most millennials these days, what are they doing? They're on their phone. They're using like Robin Hood, right? They have a level one quote. They have no idea what the institutions are doing. They're buying and selling. And they have no idea. And they don't have an edge. And most of them are losing a lot of money gambling. But who's moving the market? Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Barclays. The news is always late. I can give you thousands of examples. In fact, I'm going to show you so many today, a couple slides, that show you how the prints come first and then comes the move. Or the prints come first and then comes the news, like the president getting COVID. Yes, we had big prints the day before. We knew something was up, and I'm going to show you that today kind of crazy because we were like something's going on and I didn't know um, that the next day it was going to happen but we knew something big was happening the next day so this has been a really hot subject ever since I came on the scene in 2013 I was literally an unknown um, and everybody wanted to learn about the dark pool my success rate was off the charts and um, I've been touring uh, around the world. I've been, I did three tours with Larry Berman across Canada. He runs the biggest hedge fund um, up there, and he's on BNN every Monday. I've been on tour with The Money Show, Traders Expo. I've spoken at, I mean, I literally lived out of a suitcase for seven years, um, trading out of hotel rooms. I literally, I don't know if you could see, I had my monitors behind me. It would take them into my hotel room. Uh, and trade. I run a live trading room every day, and I don't like to miss one day of trading. So it was, you know, it was crazy. I'm not touring anymore. I only do a couple of my own, uh, my couple of my own events. But obviously, during COVID, really nobody's doing anything in person. Um, but it's been great. I've taught thousands of people all over the world, and. Um, Here's a picture of one of my presentations at the Traders Expo. Now, look at this. This is so cool. This was about 2018. Look how many women are in the audience here, you guys. Look at the long hair. But there are women. <laughs> Some might be guys, but they're, they're all women there. And they've been so busy. Um, it, it's, it's been amazing. I'm very blessed and honored. My last presentation, they didn't even have enough seats. You can see these people were sitting out in the hallway. And um, I'm happy to turn the tables of Wall Street and give us, the retail traders, the advantage. Now, we're not taking money away from Goldman Sachs, but we are following him like an ambulance chaser. Okay, that's how I kind of look at myself. I'm an ambulance chaser. I'm trading. So, okay, so what is a dark pool? I know it sounds ominous. And why does it exist? Well, there's lots of sharks in it, of course, right? There's Goldman, JP Morgan, all those guys. All right, we'll stop that scary music. Okay, so it's been around forever. It used to be called the upstairs room where they're like orders were done eons ago. Um, but now it's pretty prevalent. There's quite a few of them. And 40%, you guys, 40% of the total volume being done right now in the market is being done in this alternative exchange. And, you know, why? Why do these guys do these orders in this outside exchange that so, you, know, you can't see, right? 
Well, they do it for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, if they have 10 million shares, or let's say $5 billion that they want to sell on the SPY, if they put it up there for everybody to see, oh yeah, attention everybody, we have 5 billion shares to sell, do you think that they're going to get done with their order? No, everybody's going to run and sell, 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 sell. Here comes a big shark selling. So what the dark pool allows them to do is sell on this exchange, and they don't have to tell us about one single share until their entire order is completed. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Ridiculous, I know. They have three hours to tell us also. So sometimes they're like half a million orders, a million, two million. They could do it in the morning. Three hours later, we see the print. We see the trade appear. And um, a lot of people ask me the question, you know, well, okay, you have Goldman Sachs doing the order on one side, right? But who's on the other? I'm going to tell you that in one minute. But there's other advantages to the dark pool that really are not really advantages anymore. It used to be no commissions. Imagine if for the past two decades, well, I've been trading for 26 years, I didn't pay commissions. How, how much money would I have? Now, I started in 1994 when commissions were uh, $24.95. $24.95. Okay, now obviously they're zero in the US, but all these years I paid. Well, the dark pool, these, these big institutions weren't paying any commissions. And so imagine a $5 billion order, how much money they saved by doing it. So that was the second thing. Third thing is they could get done um, in between the bid and the offer. They had a huge advantage. They were getting better fills. Now, there's also been a lot of speculation around the dark pool. They've broken laws. There have been lawsuits against Goldman Sachs where there's price discrepancies. Um, Barclays let um, high-frequency traders front run the dark pool, which is such a no-no. You can't even have those guys in there. And they were front running the orders. And you can look it up. They were fined, okay, uh, a couple hundred million dollars maybe. Nothing. Peanuts to what they made. Right. So, again, the SEC knows there are violations, but all you have to do is pay a fine and you're good to go. So these trades are not revealed until three hours later and sometimes 24 hours later, which I'm going to get to in a little bit. But the big question is, well, OK, Goldman Sachs, he's in at a million shares. Who's on the other side of the trade, Stephanie? And there's JP Morgan, he's a big guy, and Barclays. Who's on the other side of their monster traits? Like, isn't it even? Isn't there somebody big on the other side? And the answer is no. These people, you and me, are on the other side. So it's our little accounts against their big account. Who are you going to follow? I want to be on their team. I want to be on Goldman Sachs' team. He's the big guy. He has more money than all of us combined, and he always wins. So whenever I see these big prints, I call them, big trades, they're done. They're already executed. When I see them, I make sure that I stay on the right side of them. Now, there's a little trip to it that I'm going to show you in a little bit, um, but we have four different kinds. Four types of dark pool prints. And again, these are trades. Every buy and sell is printed in the time and sales window. That's why we call them prints. These are already executed. They're done, completed trades. I pay attention to the big ones. Okay, the big ones, I know it's Goldman Sachs. I don't care about the little ones. I want to follow the big ones. So there's four different kinds. The first kind is... I say real time, even though it's not really real time, it's close to the price. So it could have happened an hour ago. Like it actually traded at that price today. So we call it real time. And I'll show you what the late prints look like in a minute. But the real time prints are, they're funny actually. Now if any of you guys watched Billions on Showtime, talks about dark pool in the first episode and I was hooked. It's the best show ever. But there's one episode where they talk about a print 
done in the middle of the day. It's a lunchtime print. And he says, oh, yeah, they did it during lunch because they didn't think that anybody would see it. How many of you go out for lunch? I don't. I don't even eat lunch. I don't leave my desk. You know why? Because during lunch is when we see all of these massive prints coming in. In fact, if you've ever seen the episode of uh, I Love Lucy, when Lucy and Ethel are in the, uh, the candy factory, and, you know, all the candy's going by really fast, and there's, like, they can't quite catch up with it, and they're putting it in their blouse, they're putting it in their hat, they're putting it everywhere, right? That's me during lunchtime when all the dark pool prints are popping up. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Okay, and I, and I map them out and send out push notifications. Um, yeah, these are real-time dark pool prints. And what they do is they splash. We don't want to trade them right away. This is the biggest mistake everybody makes when they first start coming in and learning about the dark pool. Um, and I try to teach you, but again, you're going to get splashed a little bit till you really um, trust it and know that it, it's a real thing. So why does it splash? Now, it splashes in the opposite direction of the true intended move. So if the dark pool is buying, right, they're going to move it down first, then they're going to move it up. Or if the dark pool is selling, they're going to move it up first, and then they're going to move it down. Mm -hmm. It's to catch everybody off guard. This has actually been going, been going on forever. Um, if you remember back in the day when there were actually people on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, <clears throat> there's a specialist. Right? Remember the specialist guys? They'd have a lot of phones to their ears. And who are they talking to? Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Barclays. Mm -hmm. And what is, what is Goldman Sachs whispering in this guy's ear? I want to buy 10 million shares of GDX at $21.50 and not a penny more. Can you make it happen? And the guy goes, sure thing. What does he do? He knows Goldman Sachs has a big buy order, twenty-one fifty. If he lets anybody know on that floor that Goldman Sachs is buying gold, the price is going to go up because these guys are going to go buy, 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 buy. He's never going to get it for Goldman Sachs. So what does he do? You know, a couple of guys that used to work on the floor and they whisper stuff into the crowd. And oh, Goldman Sachs wants to sell. It's like the telephone game, right? Oh, Goldman Sachs wants to say, yeah, don't tell anybody, right? But Goldman Sachs, I heard there's a big sell order on GDX. Goldman is dumping gold. Well, the guy whispers out and the other guy tells his friend, because you know, these guys want to like get one up on each other, right? And all of a sudden, um, it starts to work, right? They start selling, selling their gold. And who's buying it? The specialist. He's, and he's pretending like he doesn't like it, like it's paining him, right? He's like, fine, I'll buy you. Oh, you 500000 Fine. All right, you also want to sell? Fine. You, and he gets it down to $21, right? And then he calls Goldman and he's like, you're filled. He just made 50 cents on 10 million shares. This is why these guys made a lot of money. <laughs> and then, of course, it goes up and these guys are like, what happened? Oh, some other person came in and bought it, right? They make up whatever story they want to make up. But this is still happening. We get splashed. All right, so I'm going to show you um, a pretty recent example on Uber. You guys know Uber. You've probably taken an Uber, not lately probably. But we got on August 12th an 8 million print. And notice the time of the day, 12.23, right in the middle of my lunch. Well, I wasn't eating, but I was there. Uh, $31.40. Now, the bigger the print, the bigger the splash. Okay? So experience, again, I've been doing this 26 years. So I know which prints have a big effect on each stock. And so um, I have a dark pull app where I send out notifications. Because, look, we get a lot of prints throughout the day. A lot. I decipher what's unusual and what's not. And that's the key. So you can see on August 12th at 1236, there's my notification. 
<clears throat> I put it in my trading room um, as well as, as my dark pull app. And here is my notification. Holy moly, whenever I put that, it's big. 8 million print. I give you a bullish above and bearish below, but I know it's going to splash big time. This is literally the biggest print I've ever seen on Uber. So get ready for the splash. I wait. I kind of let it marinate is what I call it. Kind of marinates. Um, go ahead and splash, and then I attack it. <clears throat> so let me show you. This is the day the dark pull came in, right? And you see it moved down. That's a big move. That's about a couple dollars. Splash. And then it moved up. Right here it closed above the print. You don't ever want to go in on the long side till it closes above the print. Sometimes it comes up and tests the print. And it kind of like, do you, do you guys still want to sell more if they were selling? And if they say yes, it goes down. But if it goes up to the print and then it goes above it, it, yes, that is very bullish. A lot of times it'll test the print a couple of times. As you can see in this example, it went up. Back, let me just draw. It went up and retested the print again. And then it went up. All right. Now, I missed the first move. I was busy trading other things. But... <coughs> Excuse me, it's a little dry here. I came in on the retest of prints. So I call out every single trade that I take um, in my trading room live. It's an educational room. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it makes a chiching sound. So my traders all of a sudden know when I do a trade. So here is from uh, September 9th. I bought the 40 calls really out of the money. It's crazy, ridiculous out of the money. Like people don't do this. People think I'm absolutely nuts, but I have a huge edge. I don't want to risk a lot. And I know there's a big move coming for Uber, but if I'm wrong, right? I always look at the risk when I get in a trade. How much do I want to risk? I could always make a lot of profit. So um, again, I, bought, I paid 11 cents for these. And these were next week. So I needed it to go fast. I had a lot of things working in my favor. The trend was bullish. Um, and we were above the prints. And we just retested the prints, came down, and bounced. And that's when I want to attack, all right? The closer to the print, the better you are. And, um, and I ended up getting out of uh, half at 15 cents, another quarter at 19 cents. So almost 100%. ROI. The last quarter I made 100% ROI, which is phenomenal, right? Not bad for um, one day. One day. Now, it didn't even go to 40. This is the most amazing part about options. Now, there's a, there's a, lots of ways you can lose money trading options. So please, if you don't know anything about them, do not trade them with your real money. Obviously, you want to paper trade and learn. But I do something different than other people as I go out of the money. So I'm not looking to cash in on that strike of 40. I'm looking to get out into strength with time on my side. And so it's a strategy that I teach, but here's where I got out. Now, my traders in my room all followed me into this trade. Some of them thought I was crazy. In fact, look at Dwayne. <coughs> he writes, did you consider the Delta on those Uber calls, which pretty much says, are you out of your mind? Like, why are you do? why would you buy those? Well, this is what I do, and it works. And when it doesn't work, I only lose 11 cents. When it works, I make a lot more. But you can see um, all these traders in my room follow me. Lorraine made 100%. All right, just some of the trades. Yeah, it's really great to teach and trade at the same time. So I want to go more, <clears throat> and I'm so sorry, it's, I live in Las Vegas and it's really dry. Okay, so I want to show you some more examples of recent dark pool prints that splashed and moved. So here we go. We're going to shake the money tree. So plug, have you guys seen plug lately? It went up even higher today. 
Right. So you can see I drew an arrow to the dark pool app alert. That's when the print happened. It splashed down. And then it went up the next two days. It went up. This was a great trade. And there's my notification on it. Here's another one. LB, dark pool alert, 925. Buy. Now, some do not splash um, as much as others. Okay, so it's not an exact science. But the bigger the print, usually the bigger the splash. LB was a tiny splash. It gained uh, 8% in five days. Here's another one of my alerts. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Square had a 500,000 print. There was the alert, dark pool buying, and uh, it went up, I don't know, 9% in six days. This one on September 28th. This was a sell print on Halliburton. It splashed up a little that day, and then the next day went lower. That was a huge score. Here was selling on UMG. There's my dark pool alert. It went down 9% in three days on the short side. Um, ACI. Yeah, this is a really good one on September 24th. We had a big print. Splashed a little bit down and then went up. Purple. This one moved up big today, actually. <coughs> 725,000 print, and it splashed a tiny bit, not too much, and then went up. Let's see, 10% gains in eight days. Nicola, big selling. And this had a big news story, right? Well, guess what came first? The dark pool. You see the gap? That was the news with, I don't know, the bad news that came out on I don't even watch the news. I just watch the prints. But you can see on September 16th, the dark pool sold. They splashed it up over the next two days a little bit and then crashed it. Yep, happens a lot. Canadian Natural Resources, dark pool selling on September 16th. Crashed off 16% gains in 12 days on the stock. Obviously, if you trade options, you can make a lot more than that, by the way. Chevron, and that's all I trade is options. Uh, CVX, September 15th. Chevron sold. They moved it up slightly the next two days and then crashed it down. Alcoa, look at that. Big dark pull selling, 25% gains in 13 days. Twitter. I think there was news on Twitter too, right? Very, <coughs> excuse me, very large 1.6 million print. This one was a little bit extra splashy, right? Went up, went down, and then it, went, it flew up. <clears throat> um, we have FI, Franks. This one, dark pool selling, they splashed it up a little bit and then crashed it down. Volley, 12% gains in 12 days. And these are all from September. Exxon, big dark pool selling. APA, look at this, 10 million printed on this one. That's huge. So Chester, one of my traders, all right, he made 50% ROI, follow me, thank you. So following me is, is obviously following anybody. It doesn't have to be me. If you follow a mentor, if you follow somebody that's successful in this business, this is how I learned. I learned following Scotty, my boss. Watching somebody trade live, there's nothing better in the world. Like my book is great, but actually watching me do it and having me teach you while you're doing it or anybody else is going to be the best way to learn how to do anything, not even just trading. Anything in life, you should watch somebody successful do it. So you get that special rhythm to the stock market. So that splash is like a rhythm. And so I know when the big prints happen, I wait a couple of days, I let it go up a little bit, and then I let it go down, and I jump in, or I let it go down, and then I jump in on the way up, and uh, we do well. So there's other types of dark pull prints. Let's get to those fast. Late buy prints. These are, these are bad, yeah. These are not from today. Mm -mm, the price did not happen today, okay? They happened yesterday. 
I always thought it was illegal that people can report trades 24 hours late. In fact, you can't even find it on the internet. Trust me, I know when I put it in my book, my legal team is like, well, we can't find it anywhere that says they can do this. And I go, I know, they're not going to put it in there. There's a loophole, okay? If Goldman Sachs does a trade from their uh, London desk and they cross the trade with their New York desk, they don't have to report the trade for 24 hours. That's how they sell billions of dollars with loophole. Okay, so there's a special signature share size. Um, it starts with 501000 for the SPY. And a lot of times, that's all it would sell. We know they're late. It would 501, blah, 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 and the price would not be today's price. Then they started giving us 502s, 503s. We started calling them Levi's. Yeah, because it was like Levi's. So guess what? Goldman Sachs, mm -hmm. look what he did. He financed Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Is that a coincidence? No. He also did the IPO for Levi. And Gus Levi, back in the, oh gosh, 70s, I want to say, started the block trading. That's where the dark pool happens. Gus Levi, but it's L-E-V-Y, but there's definitely some kind of stuff going on. Anyway, in my book, I posted that these are the signature share size the dark pool uses for the major index ETFs. We have 501s for the SPY, the NASDAQ 410, the Russell 251, half Levi's, the DIA. Guess what? My book comes out, and then they change things. <clears throat> Can you believe that I had an effect on that? Uh-huh. All of a sudden, guess what? My indicator is not set for 500,000 and higher or 400. It's set for uh, many different things. And all of a sudden, they half them. Okay, and again, I've been watching this for years my book comes out, and then a Jerry and Brothers are talking about it, and bam, they change it. And they were sneaky. Do you know in the big crash that happened in um, January, February, all their late sell prints were in halves, like most of them. And I was like, yeah, we're on to you. Now, there's something else that they do that I can't really talk about, but there's a, there's a code we cracked um, that's embedded in their trades. Uh, that tells us a, lot, a little bit more. But, yeah, this is what they do. They cross the trade from their New York desk to the London. And I only found out about this from a floor trader that works for BMO. Long story, but he let it. Yeah, he let it. I was really furious that, they, that they're doing this. How are they getting around this? And uh, he told me. So, look, I'm telling the world how they do it. How do we know when a crash is over? Well, guess what? Goldman Sachs is going to do late dark pool buy prints. Mm -hmm. Late dark pool buy prints. This is the crash that we had. Guess what? Right here, buying in droves. Let me show you these 502s. See these 251s? 502s all day long on April 6th. More. Wait, we're still on the same day. Now, we don't normally get this many. That's how we know when it gets really heavy. We might see a couple million every day, maybe two million, maybe three million. Wait, we're still going. Same day on April 6th. And they're all done at $248 in 16 cents. 248 Now, look at the market. 263 This trade was not done. Okay, it was not done. It was done the day before. They hit it, and they're showing us, oh, look, by the way, we bought 19 million late prints. That's $4 billion, you guys, almost $5 billion, and we went straight up from there. We see this all the time, all right? So how do we know when they're selling? Well, late dark pool sell prints, same exact MO. Um, I'm going to show you prints um, that led up to this, um, this correction we had. Yeah, the big crash, right? So you can see that normally the prints are 4 million, 3, the shares right here, 4 million, right? 3 million, 2 million, 2 million, 2 million, 2, 5, 
seven. What's going on here? Now, let me just tell you that there's other indexes. I can't show you all of them today. The Russell and the Qs that also got very heavy. And uh, I share that in my book. But look at all these right here. These are all late sell prints. Now, we didn't close below it until the next day. Okay, as soon as we close below, and here's my tweet uh, to my um, followers. Spy bearish below dark pool level. I would recommend putting on protection if we close below. Okay, whenever I say that, we're going to have a correction. We're below massive dark pool selling. And it's, again, now we had massive prints on oil. We had on everything, everything. I mean, without a doubt, I mean, we knew, we saw this coming. Back in December, they started selling, but here's the deal. They sell heavy, and then they take it a little bit higher. And then they sell heavy. They take it one step higher, sell, and then it goes starts to go below the levels. That's how we know. So there was just massive, massive selling. So I do both. I'm a day trader, and I'm a swing trader, um, and I love it. Uh, absolutely. Whenever the market is moving, and I'm actually watching out of the right side of my head here, the market <laughs> monitoring some positions. I'm in. Everything looks good, though. I know the Fed had a meeting today, so I'm just watching to see if anything major happened. Um, but I do everything. I put out a video newsletter on the weekend called Dark Pool Insights, which is based about swing trading. I scour, okay, all of the unusual prints from the entire week. We have a scanner, we have a project, we have, we have amazing things that helps me do my job uh, very quickly. Um, but it's, it still takes me 10 hours to complete on Saturdays. I look through all the prints, I map out my charts, and I map out trades for my traders to take. This is really my homework that I do for myself, except I share it uh, with as many people that, that obviously want it. Um, this weekend, I'm going to just share just a little clip of it. Did somebody know about President Trump testing positive for COVID-19 before it was released on Friday, September 2nd, 2020? The market felt very witchy to me on Thursday. Check out my post from my trading room. So the market was weird. Did you guys notice it? You probably did. The VIX and the SPY, all right, on a Thursday were going up together. Yeah, fear, VIX is fear, and the SPY is going up. It's like we're going to hold on to our positions, but we're going to put protection on because something's going on. Whenever that happens, little tip, the VIX is always right. Yep, the SPY is lying. So they're both going up, and I wrote, hmm, you know, I chat all day. The VIX is moving up. The VIX is climbing. Something's going on. Watch the SPY turning down. And then the SPY started to turn down. And that's when I exited out of a couple of lottery ticket trades that I had. I had some QQQ calls that, I mean, it looked so good, but something was going on that day. We kept hitting this level, kept going down, hitting the level. Something doesn't feel right, right? We had 6 million at 1223 on the Levi's, heavy. And then I wrote, I feel like Halloween came early this year. And one of my traders, Scotty, was like, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, the market is very witchy, very witchy. And so I, I took, I actually took two cents profit on my calls. I just didn't feel comfortable. Something was going on. And of course, the next day, bam, Flotus and I tested a positive for COVID-19. Now, guess how many Levi's we had on Thursday, October 1st, you guys? Mm -hmm. This is how I mapped out my SPY in my insights. But look at this. 17 million. Okay? Now, you can see I have all the dates with all the big ones. We had some pretty big ones at 338 and 334. 11 million, 14 million. This one was bigger than all of that. It just kept coming in all day, all day. We're like, what is going on? Why is it such a heavy level? And, you know, to be honest, like, we, we didn't know how the president was going to handle COVID. Anything could have happened. 
you know, some things um, we don't know, uncertainty or how, and again, you know, the market came down the next day, right? Well, these are those late prints that came in, 335.24. We were trading higher, but something is telling us something is going on. All right, there's this is a very heavy level. So whenever we see stuff like this, and I'm just showing you all those 502s, 251s. See all the 251s? Mm -hmm. we, we know all about those. And look, there's so many of them. I've never seen that before. Wait, there's more. We're talking $5 billion. It's ridiculous. Coming in all day. So those are the late cell prints. Now, again, we have them on the Russell, the Qs. And, and so forth. And of course, this last correction that we had, um, yeah, pretty obvious. So we have four types of dark pool prints, right? The last one, do not pay attention to. Market on close prints, all right? These guys, at the end of the day, 4 o'clock Eastern, you'll see them coming in. And by the way, you can get them on Schwab. Schwab has dark pool. Um, we have uh, Lightspeed has Dark Pool, uh, Data Trader Pro has Dark Pool. Yep, Block Trade Schwab is what I use because um, we see some things on Schwab that nobody else has. Just don't call them up and ask them about it. Okay, if you want more information on it, you can go ahead and shoot me an email. Here's the deal: it's free, and if a lot of people call them up and tell them that, hey, I want to get your Dark Pool. They're going to know that it's it's a good thing, and they're going to start charging us for it. Okay, so I always tell people, like, look, if you need help with it, just I'll email me. I'd be happy to help you. All right, just don't tell them how good it is. And if you ask them about it, we don't have it. A lot of the people don't even know they have it. Um, and we'll like to keep it that way. But my email is Stephanie with an F at thedarkpools.com. I also want to give you guys a free insights video of the one I just did this weekend. So the first like 100 people that email me, I'd be happy to give you a free video. Um, again, I have a free book. Um, I trade all day. Like today, I wanted to just slap this together this morning. Here's a trade I took in my room this morning on FCX. So we had dark pool on September 8th and September 24th at 1490 and 1574 and you can see the price of FCX is well above that this is a swing I've been swinging this morning um, again I call out all my trades um, oh there's my notification I was in 17 calls I sold them for some profit and I added back this morning yep when we broke above a specific pivot I trade around pivots price levels and of course the dark pool and I have a lot of YouTube videos, by the way. Um, yeah, go to my channel. There's a lot of free stuff out there. You can learn so much more from me. Obviously, you know, my hour is only up, and I'm going to answer questions in one second. Just wanted to share that I do this every day. I get out of half of my calls at uh, 32 cents. I like to scale out. Scaling equals happiness out of another quarter, 40 cents. And then my last um, at 44 cents. And then I rolled into the 18 calls for next week for 18 cents. And I think that we are doing okay. All right, on those. Yeah, so um, if there's any questions, I would be happy to, uh, to answer that. I'll just go back to this last slide Oops, with my info on it. Okay, so Stephanie, are there any questions? Of course there are questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, how, how much time you got? Oh, no, we've got, we, we definitely have, we have about seven minutes or so here to go, but what a great presentation. But once again, so, so thought-provoking. Uh, so I kind of work backwards. Um, one person, this came up several times about where you can see dark pool trades. Can you see it on level two? No. No, you can see it on level three. I actually see them a lot of times. If you're watching the stock on the NASDAQ book viewer, uh, also called INET, which is the instant machine that I used to sit in front of. Okay. Uh, NASDAQ took it over. So what you see is you see them refreshing um, at a specific level. You probably didn't know what they were doing. Like, why is the stock not moving? It's kind of like going around and around and around. You can actually see them doing it. That's one dark pool. 
Another question came in here. Does VWAP have something to do with these dark pool orders? Uh, so VWAP is volume weighted average price. And that's where most of the volume happened during the day. And I'll tell you the messed up part about VWAP is that we get these late trades at 8 o'clock in the morning, which they're allowed to do. They okay. could do it at the close and not report it till 8 a.m. And if the price is much higher, they count the trade today, not yesterday when it really happened. And that messes up the VWAP. Uh, so it actually messes it up. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. But but wait, if, you, if you're a trader that follows VWAP, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So VWAP is here. All the computers are programmed to like write buy here and sell when it gets to the VWAP or buy when it goes above the VWAP. It's similar. You're you know, similarly trading around volume. Sure. Another question here, based on your notifications, how, how do we know which trade to take, i.e. bearish or bullish? Yeah, so I don't post too many notifications. You know, I only post the good stuff. Again, there's so many prints that happen every day um, that I pay attention to the ones. Well, me personally, so I could put out something on Tesla or I could put something out on Facebook. Sure. I don't personally trade those, those stocks. Like today I was trading FCX and MO. I stick with lower price stocks that have great options, that are very liquid. So I choose those. Choose stuff you know. That's, that's really the most important thing. Don't trade stuff that you're not comfortable with. There's, there's a lot. There's something for everybody. Sure. And that, that touches on another several questions that came up with the same, which is, is your preference primarily to trade options, you personally, Stephanie? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I switched five years ago. I mean, I'm called the stock whisperer because literally for 20-something years, I only traded stocks. And then my life changed, my whole world. I'm going to tell you, once you go to the options, you don't ever want to go back to stock. It's amazing. It is amazing. Uh, don't so be other, other yeah. questions here. Can we see that the dark, uh, oh, yeah. Can we see that there are dark bull trades in Forex or futures? So not in Forex, but we have recently gotten a massive print on the dollar, UUP. Okay. That's so yeah, we do. And I know when a dollar is going to move. Um, but yeah, so not, wait, so is Forex, and what was the other part of the question? Oh, futures. Um, there is a dark pool in futures. Real, very few people know about it. It's pretty hush-hush, but there is. Okay, so there's a dark, dark pool. Very dark. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're actually talking about a dark pool in crypto coming. Yeah, I was wondering. There was a question about crypto came up here as well. Not yet. It's not yet. <laughs> no, not yet. But I heard it's coming. I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let me see here. Uh, did, 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 trade, how many, did, did, did. Yeah. So which brokers offers this kind of platform? Yeah. So, again, please don't call them up. Yeah. Uh, Light, Lightspeed is a good friend of mine. Now, Light, I've done a lot of presentations for Lightspeed only because they have dark pool. I've been asked by many people. Can you push my software? Can you do something? No, I won't do it unless they have dark pool. Honestly, that's my number one indicator. Um, and nobody pays me a penny to recommend software. So I will literally tell you the truth about everything. But there's Schwab, which is what I use personally. Um, there is Lightspeed. There is, you know, Data Trader Pro. Those are all real-time dark pool. There's a couple others out there, like Flow Algo, but it's delayed delay. I don't like delay. It's a 15 minute delay on it. Sure. Um, and I'm not sure. And again, you know, look, I was the first one to really come out and say, hey, look at the dark pool. How can we trade this back in 2013? Since then, people have been trying to come on the bandwagon and trying to produce software and trying to kind of make money off of it. And right. so I don't really know who's legit, who's really not. Um, all I know is what I use and what I use is free, which is, you know, again, the best. You don't have to pay. Oh, there's people out there. Don't do it. Okay. Oh, we have special dark pool and you got to pay like a lot of money for it. Don't need it. Okay. No, no, and I, I think one of the big takeaways here is that if you have questions about this, once again, Stephanie has published a book 
yes. where an awful lot of this information is there. And if you have follow up, you can reach out to her, you know, through her website or email or whatnot. But really, she's a focus point, you know, for your questions as retail traders about dark pools and how to use this. Um, now, the qu several questions came in. because I, I love that because they're once again, you're so engaging. And the question is, you know, are there particular do you have favorite options or tickers that you like to trade? I mean, is yes. there a basket that you focus on. So I don't trade, even though I love Freeport, right, FCX, it's one of my favorite things to trade because the volume is amazing on the options. They have weekly options, which is great. And there's like a penny spread, right, which is amazing. Sure. Um, I don't trade it all the time because the options are great. I only trade it when the setups are perfect, when they line up perfectly and we have the dark pool activity, I wait for the splash, and then I attack. So I like all of Bank of America. Um, I, I like anything that's lower priced, under 50 bucks, um, and that has very good liquid options. I'll trade the SPY, though. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We'll trade the SPY. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Um, I have some questions here. Uh, is the website, is her, oh, is the website working? Uh, we'll, we'll follow up on that. But I think, Stephanie, let's see if there was anything else here. Da, 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 da. Those were the key things. I mean, I could... We could spend a lot more time together, but we certainly do appreciate. That was a fast hour. It, it was amazing and riveting, and it, we're just delighted to have you part of this program today. I mean, seriously, thank you so much for your time. We know how busy you are. Oh, thank you for having me. I, you know, always, I uh, will say yes to to do free presentations. Um, you know, to to help people out. You know, it's great to give back. I'm I'm blessed and very honored to have this information and happy to share. So thank you. Thank you well, for inviting me. That's thank outstanding. You. Thank you so much. There's the bell. There's the bell. <laughs> Too late. Oh my God. I was going to put on one last trade. Oh, oh, I, I, <laughs> I thought it was going to be a disclaimer statement. <laughs> Gotta go. That's perfect timing. All right. There you go. Right. Take care, guys. Well, great. What a terrific presentation. And once again, just one of the many fantastic speakers that we have lined up today to have Stephanie with us. And once again, folks, as you can see on the screen here, the free Dark Pool Secrets ebook and DVD that she has, you know, where you, I'm just summarizing where you can see the big institutional trades before they move the stock prices. She covered that in detail. See the corrections and crashes coming before they happen and how to use these insights to gain an unfair trading advantage. Who wouldn't want to have an unfair trading advantage? So the stockwhisperer.com, uh, once again, you go there and, uh, and the links are uh, also posted in the chat panel so you can take care of that. So once again, Stephanie, thank you so very, very much. And folks, just keeping things going, it is the top of the hour and the bell went off, the market is closed and we're ready for another quiz. We are ready for quiz time. Uh, as always, our moderators are the ones that pick who answered the question correctly. They'll put it in the chat for us, and we'll announce the winner. All so, right. Without any further ado, here is our quiz for the hour. Who is the best-selling female singer Ooh. of all time? Uh. It's got to be fast. I would think, I can't imagine this one would take a while. <laughs> and don't ask us to sing. We'll ask you to sing this. this one. There you go. <laughs> I think it's uh, Ethel Merman. Oh, and I can think of it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I don't know. That is fine. All right. We do have yep. a winner. Gilbert, go ahead, and uh, our moderators will get with you and Get the email address that you use to register. Oh, you said Gilbert is the winner. Okay. It is Gilbert. Okay. okay. I just want to make sure they heard. Madonna. Mm -hmm. 300 plus. Wow. So good heavens. And she hasn't been beaten yet. I would think maybe like Lady Gaga or Beyonce. Beyonce yeah, I thought the same too. Uh, Mariah Carey. Uh, but it is Madonna. She keeps on going strong.